music that I'm making right now is just really music that I want to, um, you know, to, to touch people and for people to, um, you know, to, to make people feel something, um, you know, and so I, I'm, I'm proud to connect with other people who are trying to, you know, uh, bring awareness to uh, mental health um, as well as mental health in, in our community, um, you know, because it's definitely something as men uh, and as black men that has been neglected for a long time. And so, you know, that's who I make music for people who want to feel stuff, men who are going through things, um, people who are going through things um, to try to find some light in the darkness. So Ooh, I like that. Find light in the darkness. So um, how are you doing, though, like mentally? You know, I know 2020 has been a rough year for a lot of people, some worse than others. But how are you doing, though? I mean, to be honest with you, man, I can't be someone that can that that's that's you know fronting. I, I'm it's tough right now. Yeah, it's tough. My my mental is in a tough place, man. I've had a really rough year. I've had some ups and I've had some downs. Um, but like right now, like I'm in a tough spot, bro. I'm in a tough place. You know, like um, you know, there are things that are going going well and then there's there's a lot of things that that aren't and i'm just really trying to find that that sweet spot is again man um you know like like i said i i'm hoping and uh i i need to i'm trying to revisit some things that worked for me in the past to get to a you know a place that's um that's definitely better yeah. um you know spending some some more time you know with with my therapist, spending some time in meditation, um, you know, trying to get back to the basics because to be honest, like I said, man, I'm in a, I, I, I've been in a, in a dark place for a little bit. Yeah. That's, that's why I feel like conversations are important because we don't realize that we are not. And I say this a lot, even in my writing, like a lot of us find ourselves in that dark place. The mm -hmm. ironic thing is that we're not alone there. Now, of course, it's a dark place, so we can't see. We can't <laughs> Doesn't see feel around. that way. Yeah, yeah. So we can't see around us. We don't know who else is in there. But there's a lot of people in there. Yep. Um, the key, I think, and it's easier said than done, is to just keep moving forward and keep navigating until you find that glimmer of light that could be the escape route or the escape from the dark place. I yep. find myself there a lot. I can't lie. That's why writing is my outlet. I know writing is your outlet, but I think that the additional piece that we have to realize is that we have to acknowledge it and come together and talk about it. Cause I think that goes a long way. Long way. Yeah. Cause again, like you mentioned earlier, you know, you see people on social media and I think that contributes to the dark place, honestly, because if you're in a no bad doubt. space, you see somebody else, you think they're doing great. You think it's just you. Yep. Yeah. But I'm very transparent myself. You know, 2020 has been a tough year. It's a lot of changes that's happened. You know what I mean? A lot of, yeah, man. a lot of, uh, new normals, <laughs> a lot of new normals. Uh, yeah. And I'm just happy that we're at a place now where I guess generationally speaking, that we speak about this stuff openly and without without judgment, you know? Yeah. I, I would hope I hope so, you know, like um it's like I I I, I can't even put into words like a lot of like play the where I'm at and like the things that I've been through throughout this year. And, um, you know, there were times where I was like, throughout this year, I was like, man, I'm really winning. And like, I, I felt guilty because I knew a lot of people were down and out. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like, man, I'm winning right now. And it was like, um, but, um, and then there's been times where I've been so low and it's like, you know, it's like, forget everything, you know? Yep. So it's like, it's been such an emotional roller coaster um, throughout this year. And I mean, bro, well, you really hit the nail on the head a few times throughout our conversation today, but like, 
I think the biggest one for guys like us in our 30s who have kids is like our kids have saved our lives so many times. Yes. Um, because, man, I'm a, you know, for me, I personally am a believer. I do have a, a relationship with God and, you know, and, but I'm also in touch with spirituality and the universe. And I think karma is a real thing. And I think, you know, I think those things are real as well, as well as science. Like, I think it all exists, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, but so, like, I'm somebody who is, like, you know, um, like, at, at times I've been, like, I don't, I've questioned my faith numerous times because I'm, like, yo, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing everything right, like, and it's still, like, why are these things happening to me? Mm -hmm. um, and, for, and for somebody who grew up leaning on faith so much, that can really mess with your psyche when it's like, yo, I'm doing, I'm doing everything right. Like yeah. I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm avoiding this. I'm doing that. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing everything right. And yet I see all these other people who, who have no, you know, no faith, you know, they're not doing things right. They're not a service and they're winning. Like, and, and, and like, that'll really mess with your psyche. Yeah. You know, and, and that messed with my psyche for a long time. It was like, bro, like, I'm, why, I might as well, like, just, just do whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and I realized that, like, no matter what, right, like, it, there, it's tough to say, especially when you're going through it. It's tough to say that there's a, there's a reason for everything, that there's a plan for everything but i have seen throughout my life you know not an extremely long life you know but i have seen throughout my life where like man i was like why is this happening and like i can look back and say man you grew from that you know yeah. you really did grow from that you really went you went through it like you know like there, there was some purpose in it um it helped you discover some things and so like you know that those are things that keep me going, um, yeah. which are which are hard to see when it's dark, man. Because man. like, yeah, what, you can. Uh, I'm sure you can understand. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, this is you know when things happen, it's easy for us to question why now, whether or not you're a person of uh, religious faith or whatever. What I've learned, right. is, what I've learned is like, because I used to question a lot of why certain things happen to me, but. Now I'm at a point where I understand that everything is how it's going to be. It's just, it, it kind of feels like we are fulfilling a prophecy almost. Because if you think yeah. about it, why do yeah. certain things happen to certain people, right? No, no matter what they do, because there's people who are in, in well-off situations and they just sit there like, how, why me? How did I get this lucky, you know? Then you right. have people, because I have a hard time explaining to my daughter, because she's very curious about the world. You know, she's, yeah. so she sees homeless people and she's asking like, why is that right. person homeless? And I'm like, well, I can't tell you why that specific person is homeless, but there's a variable, there's variables that contribute to people, what happens to people, right? So how do you explain something like that? Like, why is that guy homeless and why am I not? I'm pretty sure we made some of the similar decisions. Maybe. Yep. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. So no doubt life is a mystery, man. And that's why I just keep saying that it's a journey. Success is relative. So, I mean, you hit peak, you know, uh, milestones of success. Like you, you hit a successful point. Boom. Now you probably have another successful point once you hit that. But in the, in the meantime, you're going to have pitfalls and things that feel like you're not winning. But I think the most important thing is not to measure, mm -hmm your life or your winnings or your losses by anybody else's. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so. I, and bro, I have a hard time with that. Like I was just talking to, you know, one of the, one of the beautiful things about kind of going through my struggles is that I have developed a relationship with my dad in my, in my, in my thirties. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was just talking to my dad and telling him like, man, like I have a hard time with that. You know, even though I tell myself, like, I'm not comparing myself to anybody, you know, I'm trying to, you know, success is relative. Like, I tell myself that, but I have a hard time actually believing it. Yeah. Uh, and I have a hard time with, like, especially, like, in the social media age, you know, and, like, I see some people who I admire who have 
start who have you know um, administered this you know structured um, timeline or time frame of what they allot to social media every day. Yeah. Uh, and they talk about how their lives have like you know, or their you know their mental has gotten a lot stronger or better be since they put these parameters on their social media intake. And they were like, you know, look, social media is a part of my life because it's part of my brand, like how I make money and, you know, all that stuff. But it's not a place that I need to live. Right. And like that's where, that's what I realized is like, I was like living on social media for a while. Yeah. You know, uh, I was consumed and what you consume is, is exactly what you become is, you know, it's exactly. just like, you know, if I'm eating a bunch of bad food, you know, McDonald's and shit every day, I'm going to be a fat ass, you know, yeah. uh, which is, right. which has happened to me before too. Like, you know what I mean? So like, uh, and then, you know, I cut sugar out, you know, my, uh, out of my diet, you know, uh, you know, a couple years ago um, and started watching my sugar and then like recent, like it's been a roller coaster, but recently cut it out again and like, you know, put my water intake up and, Next thing you know, I'm down 70 pounds. It's like not a coincidence, right? Right. So it's it's like, bro, like you need to cut this social media shit out. Like you want, like if you're not on Facebook, you're on Instagram. You're not on Instagram, you're on Snapchat. You're not on Snapchat, you're on this, you're on that. Like you need to cut some of this out. So I put these little time limit things that they put on all these. So it tells me like, hey, you've been on, sometimes like I'm good, right? It'll be yeah. like midnight and they'd be like you've been on instagram for 45 minutes today and i'm like oh that's good yeah and then it'd be or some days it'd be like 9 15 and they'd be like you've been on instagram for 45 minutes today already and it's like golly <laughs> i already hit my limit you know and like that's how i consume it which is it's a very similar pattern to like my eating habits like yeah so like you know like two weeks i'll go i'll be really good and i'm my diet's great not a lot of sugar high protein and then like two days in a row, all I ate was Wendy's and five guys. And it's yeah. like, bro, yeah, <laughs> Lee. But you know, we're, we are social people. You know, people are social. A lot of us are social, right? Yep. Um, yep. And you By crave design. social interaction, especially mm -hmm. now with us being confined to a certain amount of, you know, interaction with everybody. Yeah. All we have really is social media to go to be socially interactive. Exactly. And so that's where the catch 22 is. Cause it's like, you know, you have to control your energy in some type of way, but social media is, makes it hard. So I don't know, man, that's why I constantly, it's tough. but that's why I constantly create reminders. That's why I say I, I'm about to plug myself again, but that's why <laughs> I have the no bad energy. Hell, hell yeah. Listen, let me tell you. Yeah. So I came up with that because I was driving, I was going back home to Maryland one day. Right. Um, I forget, mm -hmm. I forget what it was for a holiday or just because whatever. So I just told myself I was going to listen to Nas like the whole way there, whole way back. Cause I love Nas. Right. So, right. so I came across. Hey, yo, you saw it. Sorry. sorry. Huh? <laughs> you, you watch Daisy Zamero. Yeah, I watch it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> like talking about, uh, he was like, oh, you know, Nas, Nas, he wore a koofy. So, you know, I believe everything he says because, you know, I'm going to stop calling them koofies because I'm just going to call them wisdom hats. I'm going to call them wisdom hats because, you know, Nas wore koofy or wisdom hat. So it had to be real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this shit is so true, bro. When I listen to Nas for like two hours straight, I yeah. swear to God I'm about to take on the revolution. Hell yeah. I, look, when I listen to Nas, I, <laughs> I, it just does something to my whole psyche, bro. Like No, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> but I'm listening, and I and I came across a song I never heard, or I don't remember hearing at least. Um, no bad energy. So I'm listening to it, and it just it's like infectious, bro. Like no bad energy, please, no bad energy, right? And so I'm listening to it, and it just stuck in my head like the whole time. So I'm always looking for ways to control my energy, like control my own emotions. Man, that's great. So that song, if you listen to it. I, I recommend everybody go listen to it. But if you listen to it, sonically, okay. sonically okay. it just has a vibe of calming. And I can say that for a fact because my kids, right, my six-year-old and my four-year-old, they were in the car with me listening to it. Now, they were hyped up until I turned <laughs> that song on. Then they were okay. calm. You know, music soothes okay. the savage, you know what I mean? So okay. yeah. they were calm. Yep. And then 
Um, it went off, and they were like, again, play it again. So I'm like, cool, I played it again. They wanted me to repeat wow. that song like 50 times. I'm like, all right, I'm kind of over it right now. So, wow. You know, uh, but they request I play that song almost every day. Man. So I, start, I started playing it for myself in the morning when I met, right, right when I get up before I meditate and all that stuff. And it just yep. it, it started like changing my day a little bit. Like it changed my my whole everything. Oh, I'm 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 on it now. <laughs> I'm on it with you now. So I I told myself, and you know, I feel like when we embody a a, a saying or anything like that, that's why I put it. I didn't put it on anything to try to be like oh, I'm about to sell these hoodies that say no bad energy. No, I feel like it's a reminder for everybody. Like. Let's say you're having a bad day. If I have this on and you so happen to see me and you read that, it might change your day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So you know, I listen, I I am somebody who is definitely like 100% guilty of like not preserving or or even recognizing like vibes and energy for a long time. Like I remember vividly hearing people say like you know, oh, you know, no bad vibes or no bad energy over here. Play them a little bit. Like, you know, like, I just didn't get it. Like, yeah. you know, I, I'm 100% guilty of that, you know. Yeah. But as I've evolved as a person, like, I realized, like, not only was I playing myself, mm -hmm. like, I didn't even real, I didn't realize how important it was to, like, really be aware of the energy and the vibes that are around you exactly. because like yo like i said like earlier in the podcast like i grew up like an emo punk kid like mm -hmm. that vibe while i love that music that vibe is horrible for my psyche yep that like super sad angsty i hate the world shit is really bad for me <laughs> you know and uh so like, I look at it now when it, it's, like, funny. Like, I, I'm, I can't – it's a, a it's very weird dichotomy that I've just really started to accept these days because I got made fun of so much when I was younger by my black peers for being, like, this emotional kid. And, like, there's an entire genre that the entire music industry is making billions off of that's called emo rap. Mm. That's, like – it's wild to me, you know, because like I was tr like I was around bands who were blending like emo and hip hop and stuff like that when I was like 16, 17 years old. And it was like, I mean, it was no tread, you know, and like now there's like it, you don't even have to be a good artist. You just have to be sad. You just have to sad. <laughs> just, you just have to be sad. Like, yeah. That's it. And like art and labels will sign you, and it's like, what? Like, so with emo so rap, emo rap, would that be similar to like Triple X and all those guys that? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Okay, that's what yep. I was thinking. Yeah, a I mean X, X Triple X is like he's like now he's the poster boy for it because he's dead. Yeah. Right. Um, but like you know Peep and 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 um Juice Juice like all yeah, those guys. That that whole group. that whole yeah. that whole group um and like I, i'm like and look i'm not gonna like i wasn't a big consumer of their music like i wasn't like and I, I was just talking about this the other day like because of what um young thug recently said about andre 3000 and jay-z it was like look mate like i'm not trying to trip like it might be a cultural and age thing i might be an old head now but i don't know any young thug song yeah so you know what I mean? Like, and like the music that I've heard from him, like it's just a bunch of other dudes that sound exactly the same. And like, again, like we grew up in a culture where like copying somebody and trying to sound and be like somebody was whack. Right. But, but now it's like, like there are some of these artists and that like, whatever you want to call it, emo rap and stuff like who legitimately have bars but because they they sound exactly like the other person, I can't, I don't even, I can't even get it with it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I feel like that's attributed to consumerism because the companies are not so much in the, in the market of selling <laughs> good music as they are trying to sell the music. Like, 
So they don't yeah. care what they're saying. As long as it appeals and makes money, I don't care That's what you it. think. You say your ABC right. for all I care. Which is which is standard. I mean, we know that that's been the standard in the music industry for a long time. I think I'm just surprised that because of like the freedom that we have with streaming these days, yeah, that you know there would be more people who were willing who wanted to consume better Better things, better music, you know, and like. Academics said this, like, you know, a little while ago, just like, you know, with the Meek Mill thing, like, he's like, yo, like, he's, he, I mean, he's been somebody who's actually called Meek Mill a fraud for a minute, Uh but like, you know, he was like, look, man, I'm not, you know, he's like, look, I I can't get with it as somebody who's covered, like, you know, the drill music scene and seen people, so many of these dudes die, like, if you're still perpetuating that message as a, as a successful artist, Mm-hmm. in the industry, if you're still perpetuating that as a man, you're a fraud. And I was like, yeah. damn. You know, like, I, I really was like, damn, he, he's ja- he's right. You know, he's ja- right. I mean, and I'm a Meek Mill fan. You know, yeah. like... I think one of the most powerful things that I was uh, told or that was, that was said in the conversation that I had, again, in episode one, I have to attribute this to Rain. So he was saying that uh, basically... La, la, la. What he said. <laughs> so basically, I think as the consumer people, right, we have mm-hmm. to understand the power that we have. We can literally control what we listen to and what we subscribe oh, to. Wow. Right. So I think if enough people would do that, it takes the power out of the hands of the people that we often complain about, right? So mm-hmm. the people that are perpetuating the bad messages and stuff, if we don't give them the power, they have none. Right. So, so we have to go back in and toggle our preferences, I think, and control exactly. what you're listening to and show that, hey, that's not marketable. That's not that's not going to make money. Right. We don't, we don't care for that. Yep. So, bro, th- that that is so key. And like that stuff that I like, look, like I was talking to. So I, I have a good friend who, I mean, for all intents and purposes, like, I mean, he's a very successful artist. He's white. His name, he went by Mike Stud for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, now he goes by Just Mike. Um, and like, you know, he was talking about, we were, we were talking about, and he talked about on his podcast, like, look, I could go in and make a hit song right now. Like I can go in the studio and make a hit song talking about whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, he was like, you know, I feel like, it means more to me to stay authentic to who I am and, you know, to people who know my music, like, you know, going to show, you know, what we talked about, like writing for who, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's like super important. Like, you know, I'll listen, like I, I have to, like, there are new artists like right here in DC, like, uh, you know, look, young Manny, I listen to Young Manny, and like I'll I'll listen to Young Manny, and he be snapping. Mm-hmm. But like then I'm and I'm like then I'm listening to see the content, and I'm like, bro, what are you consuming? Like first of all, he's a child. Like in all intents and purposes, he's a teenager. He's a child, mm-hmm. and listen to what he's talking about, and like what makes up majority of his music. You right. know what I mean? Like. He snaps. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love him. I really do. But I'm like, if I listen to this all day, I'm going to get out of my car and I'm going to want to shoot somebody. <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? People, like, people don't understand like, the power of music and the power of the words. The power it of music, a man. Lot. Yeah. What, like, why, like, I don't want to be in that mind state. So, like, I'll literally be like, bro, you got to cut this off. Yeah. Like, I'll be on, I'll be on a long drive or something. And, I, and like, it's the same stuff that used to happen to me with, like, listening to, like, Jeezy and stuff. Yeah. Like I love I love Jeezy and like I love artists like I love that dope trap shit. I love that stuff. But I know that I have to limit myself because A, that's not me. Yeah. And B, like it will change how you operate. It will yep. change how you think, you know? It and it's- so like you, you know, like it's important to feed your mind and your brain like with you know, much more positivity, or, you know, or things that actually you relate to or that, you, 
And like that's why I'm so big on a young on this you know another young artist named Fora, like because like I'm a storytelling guy, right? Mm-hmm. None of my I'm not I can't really go in a studio and like conjure up like a song. That's not who that's not my lane, you know. There are there are guys who can go in a studio and they just like conjure up whatever. Everything that I write about is from experience. Right. It's a it's a story like for you know either from things that I've witnessed or seen or that I've experienced myself, you know, I'm right. not a like conjure up this fake, you know, there's a lot of artists who are like, where'd you, you know, how'd you come up with this song? And they're like, Oh, you know, like I, you know, I just read a, you know, whatever. Like, that's not me. Like everything is an, ex- I can draw it from a specific experience. That's just me. And I think that's maybe poets as a whole, you yeah. know? Um, but like, that's what I mean. It's like you, it's so much more impactful to draw it and, things that 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 are positive you know or things that are relatable that are not necessarily um you know harmful to yeah. your brain nothing nothing you know, counterproductive. yeah right counterproductive that's a great word for it counterproductive yeah so yeah man I, the argument i make because i used to be of the mindset that you know music was harmless you listen to it and go about your day me right? too me too me yeah. too and then, you know what, one of the, for anybody that doubts me or doubts that music influences you, play, go to a party or whatever with a bunch of, I'm going to say black people, black women especially around, and play mm-hmm. that intro to, all you got to hear is, what's it, Cash <laughs> Money Records <laughs> taking over nine, 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 and see what happens. See what happens. See what happens. Just look around. See what every, happens. Every girl... <laughs> In that every girl in that joint is all you gonna see, shirt, bro. <laughs> all you gonna see, that's it, bro. They about to just go play back it. that ass up. That's it. You gonna see? I mean, that's a conditioned experience. Yes. We t- we talking about girls who weren't even born <laughs> in the nine nine two thousand. And right. then another example. I remember we used to go to little parties and stuff back in the day. Um, if you play anything three six, ten oh, it's gonna anything. be a fight. It'd be a fight, be a fight every time. It's gonna be a fight, bro. We fight. <laughs> already go. Already. So I mean, yo, that's <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. That is such. I mean, listen. That is. Those are two excellent examples, bro. Yeah. I I remember vividly. We were actually me and some homeboys back at home, right? Yeah. We was driving to fight people, and we were list. We had turned on three six. See, so it gets you ready, right? You listen to anything, hair buses, and you start doing this, so and you ready. We were going. We were going to a place where we knew, it, and we were like, "Let's put on three six. What's the three six <laughs> album with the with the blue with the blue yeah. on the CD? Yeah, yeah, bro. We put that joint in, and like, really, we was ready. <laughs> I'm telling. Hey, but when Eminem was like, what do you say? They say music can alter moods and talk to you, but can it load yeah. it for you and cock it too? Cock it to you. I'm, I'm kind of like, I, at the time, I was like, yeah, Em, tell them music ain't the problem, but like, I don't know, as I got older. Right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> it can. Yes, it can and load like, it for you. Yes, it can. Cock it too. <laughs> cock it too. Right. Right. Like, I re- look, I'm a M was like one of my favorite artists of the yeah. 2000s. So like, you know, he spoke a lot about that. Like, it like, even just on like, let's, let's look. Yes, it can. How about that? Like, yeah. Yes. Let, let's just go there. And I think even him and his and and now if you were to ask him that now from like when he wrote that 20 something years ago. He would probably have a different outlook on it. Exactly. You know, it all comes with, because, it all comes with uh, growth, man, and evolving. And yeah. A sense of understanding, like, because when I when I explain to my Look. teenage son, when I t- explain to my teenage sons that I would like for them to have more balance as far as what they listen to and and put in their bodies, whether it be from YouTube or music. Like I tell yeah. them, mind you listening to certain stuff, but have balance, though, at least. Because I'm not going to get you to not listen to it at all. As I said before, my, my parents couldn't get me not to listen to it. Yeah. But just right. balance. Because that way, at least you're not overly consumed with the negative stuff. You know what I right. mean? Right. Right. 
I mean, look, man, like I said, I 100 believe, hundred percent believe in the, like the the words make a difference. Like, if we all just listen to instrumentals all day, yeah, the whole world would be different. It would be. It would. It'd be completely different. But I can 100 percent tell you that, like, the music that I started to consume when I went to college changed what I did in college. How so? Like, <laughs> Bro, I, <laughs> yeah. you with the ragers and stuff like that? You was like not not like ragers. Like, see, here's the thing too. Like, so I started college at an HBCU, and then I transferred to an all basically an all white school. Yeah. So, raging at an HBCU was just normal shit that I had seen growing up in Charles County. Yeah. Like, they didn't they didn't really rage like white people. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like. But, no, what I'm talking about is, like, going to an HBCU for an entire year, right, I had, I didn't grow, I, the only rap that I had listened to was, I never had bought a rap album for myself except the Slim Shady LP. That was it. Mm. That was, like, 10th or 11th grade of high school. Yeah. Everything else I, I consumed through my friends, Jay-Z, 3-6, um, um, cash money, pun, like, and then whatever my brother listened to, who's nine years older than me. Right. So, so like, I never really consumed hip hop until I went to an HBCU, and it was first of all that was it was a great like I was like oh my gosh I didn't know like music like this was out here <clears throat> that I was like like again it wasn't up my alley man when I was fourteen fifteen sixteen. Hip hop didn't really, it didn't speak to me like that. Yeah. You know, so I wasn't really intrigued by it. Yeah. You know, so like I'm now I'm starting to listen to music where they're talking about being with women and, you know, this and that. And like your, your curiosity starts speaking. But really, what happened to me, man, is because of my family history, you know, my, you know, I've got. Uh, there's a lot that we could dive into right now that I'm going to spare you with, but my, like my family history is like, there's movies based on like my family as West Indians, like that have been made like in the underground of New York that we could get into on another topic. But like oh, my yeah. family, my family history is not, is all about like drug, drug dealing and like, you know, drug abuse and things like that. And like, you know, my, my mom really is like the, like the first person to like really do something with her life as far as like getting out of that world. Okay. And so like that stuff is in my genetics, you know? And so while my mom took us and moved us, you know, to the suburbs, half my family's from the UK, half my family's West Indian. So, you know, while my mom moved us cause she was in the air force, moved us to the suburbs, you know, I grew up with a mom who, who, who did well for herself. You know, um, I didn't know any of that other stuff. But, bro, one thing I was addicted to was money mm -hmm. and fast money. Yeah. So, you know, I was, I was a great student. You know, I never got in trouble, nothing growing up. And still, you know, for the most part, growing, you know, even through college when I was wilding, I didn't really get in trouble like that because I was just a little bit smarter than the next guy. Yeah. That was just, a, that was it. But, bro, that music, I, you know, I didn't smoke weed growing up. I didn't smoke, I didn't even, I never touched any drugs growing up until I got to college. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I don't do drugs, but if I sell this, I can make money and it can fulfill that mental illness that I have for acceptance by being accepted by some of these people that I feel like I've been neglected by because I don't smoke weed and I don't do drugs and, you know, I don't do this and that, you know, I'm a straight edge kid, but yeah. I'm a sell it to them. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm smart enough to get on with somebody. You know, I was listening to this music, bro. I learned how to bag up and like weigh out weed through <laughs> music, bro. Right. They tell you everything step by step. Everything. Everything, man. You know, I, I mean, I'm listening to clips, like learning how to bag, you know. You <laughs> and know, you're like, hold on, you know, what you Straight say? up. Right, straight up. Straight up. 
<laughs> no doubt. Like, and like, you know, so this that's the it changed shit for me, man. And like that's like in like when I transferred, you know, to schools, I was like, I'm gonna reinvent my whole self, man. Yeah. I'm gonna reinvent my whole self. I got to that school, I had to connect, you know, and I be and but I, I didn't, you know, every, every there's people still to this day who went to school with me during that time who were like, What? You did that? I didn't know you were that dude. Because like it Wait wasn't really you about watch, real quick, you watch power? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You watched yeah. the new one, right? Ghost? Yeah. So you were Tariq? Yeah, I was Tariq. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. I never thought of it like that, but yes, 100%. <laughs> yes. I was Tariq. Like, yeah. Like, you know, they people who were like, you know, like, I would, look, straight up, somebody would, you know, I'm walking on campus and somebody would have checked me one day and was like, I was Tariq. They would have just got my shit. Because I, you know, I'm not no tough. I wasn't no tough guy. Yeah. You know, I was just, I was just smart, smarter. Yeah. Than the, than the, than the next guy, you know. But I mean, it, at no 100, percent it all leads to the same places. It doesn't matter where you start or yeah. how smart you think you are. It all leads to the same place. Oh, and sure. I eventually, eventually got in trouble. Eventually, you know, had some other issues in my life. You know. Um, because a ain't no money like fast money. Exactly. When I you get it fast, when times. you get it, yeah, man. When you get it fast, it's hard to go back. It is hard to go back. You know what changed um, my mind? What? So I was gonna get into the uh, what's the what's it called? Uh, distribution of narcotic sales. I never did for any police. I never did it, but. I had I saw it firsthand, right? Mm -hmm. What got me out of it, I saw a a house of a friend get raided by the police one night. Ooh, that don't do it. <laughs> and I said, nah, nope. Yep, not for me. Nope. Not for me. Yep. Can't do it. I, look, bro, that'll do it. Cause, I look. was bro, I was this close, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. you see, that's why I say representation matters so much. That's why I'm so big on that. Because yeah. I worked jobs, right? Like I worked at Wendy's, I worked at Checkers, all these places like that. But the money was like, you know how that money, that money ain't really- So slow. So when I see people around me that chose that other lifestyle and they have all the things that I want and they got money and they got the girls, they got all, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go this way. I had to try. Yeah, and I didn't grow up in a bad, with a bad family or bad household. That's why I'm like, but you know. Exactly. And that's why I say, like, temptation is around for everybody. Yeah. You know, temptation. I never hustled out of necessity, for right. real. Like, I never did. Like, when I went to college, like, especially when I was at the HBCU, like, all my eight black friends used to call me Rich Ashton. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? And I wasn't rich at yeah. all. But, but in their eyes, the way you look is rich. Exactly. And I wasn't hustling or doing nothing. And I was just a regular ass kid from Waldorf, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, I'm sure that didn't help. So like, you know, it's all relative, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I never hustled out of necessity. So I never was like, you know what I mean? I, can, I don't, again, like I wasn't, I don't relate to like, this is all I had. And like, you know, I had to, my back against the wall. Like, yeah, no, that was exactly. not me. You know, what I, exactly. I was hustling, man. I put my other boys on. We was hustling so we could buy white on white Nikes and fit it. Yeah, that's me too. So, because I have such an entrepreneur mindset, like I said, from young. So I was always looking for the next best way to make more money. And that, exactly. day, that was that was what I saw that was making it. Going to work for somebody and asking them to give me more hours and put me on the schedule. Yep. It, Bro, <laughs> working there. Yo, me and my man, Lo, you know, Angelo. Yeah. Um. We was working at Pier One in the gap. I'm pulling two jobs and I'm bouncing in college. And like, man, I was like, I see all everybody around me is smoking it and doing it, you know, sniffing it or whatever. And I don't do none of that stuff, right? Yeah. So and I'm like, I had a man who I knew could put me on. And I, he was like, bro, look, this is how easy it was. I didn't even ask to get put on for real. Yeah, you like was just customers. like customers. 
Yeah, my man was just like, hey, you kind of know everybody. Like, hey, you want to take this? Quap? I was like, oh, okay, I guess. And literally, like I said, I would listen to rap music and learn how to break it down. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know, and, and and then the money started coming fast. And it's like, what are, wow. Like, okay. And that's when I genuinely started thinking, like, man, these nine to fives are for suckers. Right. You know, like you said, we literally had to go in and ask our manager at Checkers and the Gap, can we get some more hours yeah. for seven fifty an hour? <laughs> so I can have a little bit of money, please. But yeah, please. so I can buy my mom, so I can buy my mom a candle for Christmas. <laughs> right. Hey, real quick. So your statute of limitations has ran out, right? You ain't going. I'm not. We not DJ Vlad and you, right? Nah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you, yeah. Yep. We're good. Well, all right. So what does a successful 2021 look like for you? Like in your eyes? A successful 2021, man, for me is, um, I'm, for me, 2021 has got to be about Ashton. It's got to be about being a healthy Ashton so that I can be healthy for my son. I like that. You know, and, and whatever else, whatever else the, the universe or God gives me is a cherry on top. Yeah, but um, I I got to get myself back to a healthy place where I'm mentally uh, available and stable and able to receive the things, you know that that are in store for me. Because like I'll be honest, man, there's been some opportunities that have opened up for me, and I'm not ready for them, you know, and um, I just want to be ready. Yeah, and we gonna be re- we gonna be ready. What about you? A uh, successful 2021 for me. Um, just to keep growing my business, just to keep being a positive representation of, of or positive representation to my kids and to anybody that looks up to me and sees anything yep. positive from me. Um, and just to keep on and pushing. Keep man. writing. And keep, keep writing. Keep writing. Um, keep now, writing. Keep writing. Keep so writing. The writing keep part. Writing. If I'm inspired, honestly, if I'm inspired to write, I'm a write. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, my short term is to sell every single one of these books that I have around this house that is just taking up space right now. Well, I got to get one because I, I, it wasn't on the menu when I ordered my stuff. Yeah, I got you. Um, so I'm going to put the link back on the website probably tonight. Um, once All I put right. it on there, you'll be able to go grab one. But um, yeah, just to, just to keep on getting being a better version of me than I was yesterday. Yesterday. That's yeah, it, that's, that's my motto, man. Like, if I'm better, me too. Yeah, if, if me I'm too. better today than I was yesterday, and so on and so forth, I'm winning, man. And that's what I'm saying. Is like, I feel like in 2020, I like first of all, negativity is stronger than positivity. Right. Like, a negative impact will can ruin your life. You know, a lot of positive things is not gonna ruin your life. You know, yeah. ruining your life is easier than making it better. Yeah, you know, and so like I in 2020, I felt like, you know, there wasn't enough good days, if that makes sense. It may not necessarily be a negative, so to speak. It may be a life lesson. That's how I look at it. Of course, of course, on yeah. the surface level, I mean, of course, I'm looking at it like, man, this, I don't like this. This is negative. But even when I go back to when I was eight years old and I lost my mom to cancer, right? what the domino yeah. effect from that was. Yes, there was a lot of negatives, but ultimately right now, would I be in a position to authentically relate to people and tell them, hey, I feel your pain. Hey, I have this pain that I can relate. No to. doubt. You know, I would. I probably wouldn't have that. So would I even be who I am, you know? Right. So it's all about perception. No doubt. Yeah, and I'm just going to leave it off with this. You don't probably remember this, but we was both, trying out for JV basketball for the Cougars. And, uh, you know, Rob Naylor Jr. was doing his thing because he was better than all of us in ninth grade. And uh, I was just trying to – I was just trying to make the team. And uh, back-to-back possessions, first the Bama ripped me in the backcourt, the layup with, in front of varsity. Everybody goes wild. He rips me. Then the second time I get it, I try to make a pass. He two-hand blocks it. Like, I was like, whoa. 
what the hell? Two hand blocks, it goes the other way, lays it in, back to back possessions. Next day, I get cut. I don't so, remember none of that. Yeah, of course. Of course, <laughs> I was a no, I was a nobody for basketball. <laughs> I don't remember of that. Of course. Hey, no, but the thing is, so <laughs> I blame Michael Jordan. <laughs> I blame Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is the source for my competitiveness. Well, him and my dad. My household is yeah. competitive. If you, my household, we compete for everything. Who can make the best cereal? Who can do, bro? That's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> to this day. But yeah, man. I want to apologize for uh, blocking your shot and <laughs> ripping you back to back possessions. Um, back to back. But I'm glad we're good. You know, I'm glad we did this. I'm glad to chop it up with you. And I'm here for you anytime you need me, man. Anytime. Anytime hey, you want to talk. But I, pre- I appreciate it. We, we'll, we're going to talk soon, and I appreciate everything you're doing. Yeah, no doubt, man. You, okay. Be easy, my brother. All right, you too. All right.